thank you, Marisol. And I would also like to give thanks and thank you. Thank everyone for your support for the ministry here in Manila. And we know that it's always by grace and the mercy of God that we can continue with the work and to expand the kingdom of God. And it's not just in the mercy of God, but in everyone's heart that is willing to carry the vision of the church. And so we are here today because many of us are carrying the burden and willing to move forward with us. So we want to thank you for all your giving and may the Lord return to you more than and greater than you have expected. Amen. So today, we continue with our series about love and trust and also about discipleship. Last week, we have received and we have encountered Jesus. Amen. Just as Peter encountered Jesus when God spoke to him. How many of us were like Peter? Many times God spoke in our heart. Many times God touches our hearts. Anak, do you love me? Do we have that kind of feeling that am I showing the love? Am I really responding in the love of God? How many of you have this kind of feelings? Because for me, I always have that feeling. Every day and every time I do something and at the end of the day, I come to reflect on myself. And I will say, Lord, have I ever showed you the love that you ask of me? And I believe each one of us, God speaks in our hearts. Amen. And now, how many of us responded last week? Everyone raise up their hands. Amen. Nung sinabi ni, ni, Pastor, ni Brother Joel, how many of you love Jesus? Oh, everyone. How many wants to join the cell group? Ooh. How many wants to lead the cell group? Everyone raise their hands. But have we really respond in our relationship, in how we begin to have the heart for other people, for our families, for our friends, even for our enemies, even for our difficult boss? How many of us really had that heart to someday, Lord, I pray that I can bring this person to you, that I can disciple this person. It doesn't matter if they are your boss. Or they are older than you. They are greater than you. But you begin to have that desire. You know, in the beginning, Peter did not have. But we thank God for that very special encounter that he had along the shore of Galilee. When God asked him, Peter, do you love me more than these? When you say these, it's not just about the fish. But it's everything that Peter has. Everything that Peter may encounter and face at that current situation and even on the future ahead. And the Lord told him three times, do you love me more than this? Why? Because to love God, it is not really an easy journey. Many times we also ask ourselves. Many times we will always, we will also find ourselves, you know, difficult, you know, hard up to follow God in our lives. Hindi lang siguro three times. Not only three times, but more than we ask, God will ask us. Because to follow God, it, it takes really an effort. Just like what Peter is going to share to us in first, in Second Peter chapter 1. We thank God that Peter was transformed. On that encounter, Peter's heart was transformed. The fearful Peter, the Peter with a lot of weakness, the Peter with a lot of boundaries, the Peter that always goes after money, after wealth, after security, who always, you know, works for his family. The Peter who turned away and turned his back to God. And that special time, his heart was being touched and was being transformed. And so that's why God said, Peter, you are the rock, and to you I will establish my church. Did you see the great transformation in the life of Peter? Peter was not a courageous person. He was fearful. That's why he left Jesus. That's why he denied Jesus, not just once nor twice, but thrice. But you know, God saw him and made him worthy to take up that responsibility to build the church of God. Amen? Why? Because Mo uh, Moses, 
Peter was being transformed. Amen? And the same thing and the same experience, Peter wants to encourage the next generation, especially the church in Asia in, the, in, first, in 2 Peter chapter 1. Because during those times, Peter rose up to be this great apostle. He is the head of the church during those times. He was the, the apostle of the early church. And so Peter was able to meet it. Amen? He was able to respond. That's why 2 Peter chapter 1 was being written. Now I encourage you to open your Bible in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. And this is the continuation. After Peter responded to the call of God to disciple, Jesus said, if you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, tend my flock. Because the greatest way that we can show how much we love God is not about doing a lot of ministry. It's not simply accepting Jesus in our lives, but being able to do what Jesus did. Amen? And that is discipleship. Now, sabi po dito in, first, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 11, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them in nearsighted and blind is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I believe this is the desire of each one of us to enter into the eternal kingdom of God. Amen? It is God's goal. It is God's desire for us. And so today, we are entitled this chapter, Grow in Fruitfulness with Love and Trust. We are still in discipleship. I think what's, what's the relation of this chapter about discipleship? Because when Peter began to establish and plant churches, he also rise up to be like Jesus. He received the spirit of Jesus to proclaim the gospel. And it's not just to proclaim. But God says, as you feed my sheep, Peter also has to respond and disciple others to tell them, disciple God's sheep. Let us together disciple the sheep of God. And so that's why there's a lot of churches being planted in Asia and in different parts of the world during those times. But there was a great persecution from the Roman Empire. No mga panahon po na iyon, the early churches were experiencing a lot of suffering. They were taken because of treason. They were being taken captives, be taken to the prison. They were being killed. They, were, they suffered a lot. And so during those times, the churches and the early Christians began to be discouraged. Why? Because they discipled people. They built up church. They raised, us, raised up life. And then because of the great persecution, many Christians was not able to grab hold and stand firm in their faith. After so much effort from the disciples, after so much effort from the elders during those times, many Christians fall and they turn back from their faith. Many begin to sacrifice and worship 
Nero, Emperor Nero. Because the emperor during those times asked the people, lahat po ng under the colony of Rome, they should bring sacrifice and worship the emperor. And many of pagan world, pagan beliefs, starts to corrupt the churches. And so what happens? The church begins to be smaller and smaller. And many of them fall away. They fell away from the truth. That's why Paul, well, that's why Peter wrote this letter. Because many of the churches during those times, they were so discouraged, especially the disciples. Why? Sabi po dito, in 1 Peter chapter 5, this was the very command of Peter to the elders. Before the second Peter was written, before that, Peter encouraged the elders on those churches to disciple. They need to continue to love one another, disciple them. Now, I want you to read in 1 Peter chapter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4, and it says here, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow dear and witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed, to be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flocks. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. After Peter exhorted this verse, many Christians rise up to disciple. So that's why the church, boom, the church grew so fast. But after a while, when the persecution came, and the persecution lasted for a very long time, that many of the disciples, many of the cell leaders during those times, many of the elders, they themselves are very discouraged. Many of them turned away from faith. Why? Discipleship, yes, it is not easy. It is not easy to care. It's not easy to lay down your life. And then these people you spend time with, these people you cared, you feed them, serve them, teach them, raise them up, these people will turn away from you. And so many of the church's elders were so discouraged. And so now, Peter wrote before them, wrote to them, even in the time when Peter is about to die and to be martyred. What did Peter say? Sabi po ni Peter dito, you know, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Their faith is precious. And it's the same thing that Peter and these discouraged elders have the same or have in common. It is the faith. And this is the beginning of every Christian. It is our faith. We become Christians because we believe in Jesus. Amen? That's why we have Christ in our name. Christian. And the Lord says, you are Christian. You receive the faith. And he encouraged them in verse to grace and peace to you because many of them were really in fear. Many of them are in a lot of suffering and they do not know when will it end. Parang yung pandemic po natin ngayon. It was not easy. How long? How far can this pandemic go? We don't know. But Peter today, it is an, he is encouraging us. He says, we need to have the grace and peace because we have the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And this knowledge of Jesus, knowing that Jesus, in verse 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory. And through that this power working in us, did, this gives us the godly life that means the godly nature. Amen? Ano po yung godly nature? It is a nature that can persist even in the midst of difficulties. It is a nature that can fight, that can stand in faith. And sabi po niya dito, you are no longer in the world 
or you are no longer under the power of the corruption of the world and evil desires because you have the divine nature of God. How come? What Peter is saying, you already have the ability to overcome. You have the ability to persist because you have the nature of Christ. And that nature, it is the nature of God, it is the power of God that transformed our life. Why did Peter say this? Because he himself was being transformed. What was the nature of Peter? Peter is a very arrogant man. He's not courageous. He's arrogant. He's full of pride. He is full of self-righteousness. He doesn't care about others. He only care about himself. He only care about his face. Every time he challenged God, Lord, I can also do that. Make me do that. You know? He always boasts of his ability. And it's not easy for him to lay down his life and to embrace the church. He can say, oh, you're so weak. He can say, oh, when will you learn? He can be discouraged in discipling these churches, seeing how they have turned away from the Lord. But Peter says, no, he encouraged them because Peter is no longer that arrogant man. He is no longer that full of pride. He can feel the weakness of others. He can be weak to the weak. He can embrace them, encourage them. And this is Peter. And that brings us to the first point. Like Peter, life grows out of the wilderness. Life, there is life being transformed from the wilderness. Remember Peter, before he can speak these words out, he too was in the midst of darkness. He too did not understand where to go. After Jesus died, he was lost. So what? He went back to fishing. But this is not the calling God is giving him. But God, in his encounter to himself, to, to, to Peter, God transformed him. God changed his life. And so that life grows even in the darkest time, in the darkest moment, of their life. And same is true what he's saying to these people. You are no longer that person, that people. Why return in your old ways? Why return in your old ways? You want to always have the easy way out. You always want what's easy. It's not easy to follow God. But Peter is saying, you are no longer that old self. God gave you his very nature. And this nature is submitted dun po sa obedience sa Panginoon. And you are no longer under the worldly de desires and corruption. That means we are no longer being swayed by the things of the world. A little persecution and a little steering, we give up. We turn away from the Lord. We have no stability. And many, uh, many churches and Christians are like this. But Peter is saying we can overcome. How? Through discipleship. Through discipleship. Because when do we mature? When do we have that life that is no longer tossed to and fro? It is when we are being discipled. It is when we grow. We cannot just grow coming to church. Why? We always say we only receive 5% every Sunday. When we come to church, there's so many things happening in our mind. We think of our work, we think of our family. It's not easy to receive once every Sunday, once every week. pag nga po natin, we don't even know the title of our preaching. Amen? All we know, but, mm, galing -galing. but we don't know the title, we don't know the points. But you see, in discipleship, like last time Matt shared that, you know, the, the word is being reinforced in cell grouping. That's why there is cell group. That's where we grow. That's where we chew the word. That's where we really experience the word. That's where we really reflect the word. So if we only come to church, that is not enough. 
God is saying and Peter is saying, our life can grow and mature. How? Through discipleship and pastoring. Just as Peter is saying to the elders of the church. And you know, I believe each of the cell leaders here, we have experienced growth and maturity because of cell grouping. In my life, I didn't mature because of going to church. I did not become a pastor by just simply receiving the word. But how did I grow and mature? It is when I begin to be discipled by Pastor Danny and Pastor Joshua. It is when I begin to lead my cell group. Because in cell grouping, they begin to tell me what I don't see. It is easy to say, ah, the, the preaching last Sunday is very encouraging. It is right. It is true. But how did it change your life? How would you use it in your life? In cell grouping, that's where we really receive the fullness of the word. If we don't come to cell group, our mind as a Christian will only be on the head level. You know a lot. But we are talking about life, not knowledge. We are talking about life, not abilities and gifts. That's why we are called 611. It's raising and building up trees of life. And this is what Peter, and I thank God for this revelation for us in every 611 people. This is all about building life. It is true discipleship. That's why there are two things that are indispensable in our church. And I want you to know, one is morning devotion. Second is cell grouping. This is the most important thing in our church. That's why we never fail to have our morning devotion and also cell grouping. Because this is where life grows out from the wilderness. Just like in myself. Without discipleship, I will not be here. I will not be here to preach the word. Because my only dream, again, is to get rich. That's only what I want to do in life. It is not about giving myself, but taking more. Getting more. But in discipleship, Peter is saying, you are no longer that old self. You are no longer that corrupted person. You no longer walk in that evil desires of your heart. But instead, you have the nature of God. And in the nature of God, we are able to know the right path. In the nature of God, we can make right choices in our lives. Because we are no longer led by our desires. What does it mean to be led by our desires? If we are hungry, it is easy for us to get angry. Amen? Why men sin? It is because of our desires. When we don't have enough sleep, our mood will change. Amen? If we want something, but we cannot get it, we steal. If we are so angry, we feel misunderstood. We feel we are, our, heart, our lives, our emotions, our feelings are invalidated and not accepted. We can kill. It is all about evil, our desires that brings us to this worldly kind of life. And brings us to sin. But Peter says, no, you're no longer this old self. You have the nature of God. Even in persecution, you cannot compromise. You can have that faith. And that life grows from wilderness. And at the second point, in verse 5 to 11, it says here, for this very reason, Make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, and goodness, and to knowledge, to knowledge, etc. There's so many things that we need to add. You saw when Peter says, because you have that godly nature, we are able to put this on and add things, add things, add all this. Godliness, perseverance, self-control. How many of us have all this? We're not confident, yeah? And no one did dare to lift our hands. Do you think God wants us to do something very impossible? Do we think God wants us 
to do this is like God is hypocrite. We are humans. We cannot do this. But you see, God said it. Peter said it. That means it is possible. Why? Because we have the nature of God. We have that power of God in us. And that, it says here, it is not just faith, but it begins with faith. It's not enough that we are called Christians in our time today. But as Christians, dapat makita, people must begin to see the reflection of being a Christ to us. That means we can add what? In faith, virtue, or goodness, what is this virtue? It is the goodness of man. It is the manliness. Yung pagiging human po natin. Because when we have faith, when we have faith, we begin to know there is God and there is man. Amen? Without faith, men will always think they are gods. That's why the beginning of all things is faith. Unless we have faith in God, there we can see and acknowledge we are men. We are humans. We are limited and we need God. And so when we have that, you know, faith and the goodness, we can add a lot of things. Second point is love and trust to be fruitful. And I want to show you this, uh, this drawing. Yeah? And this, this shows us how fruitful we can become. When we begin to disciple and act on the, the, the godliness or the nature of God in our lives, we can have all this. Amen? Sabi ko kanina, it seems very impossible, but it is possible. Why? Because the, the Lord says the more we give, the more we receive. Amen? In discipleship, the more we give, the more we receive. That means it is not us who adds these things, but this is God's work over our lives. Amen? It is not men. It is not men trying to be faithful, to be trying to be virtuous, to be knowledgeable, to have that self-control. But all these fruits are actually coming from God when we learn to disciple. When we learn to walk and submit to the calling of God. And it says faith. That means this is loyal to the truth. When we disciple, we can pass on faith. Virtue, this is goodness or the original being of man. Knowledge is truth. Knowing what is truth from what is evil. Self-control. Self-control is what? It is a self-control from the enjoyment of the world. Because in the world, the world will give you easy way out. Come on, this is easy money. Let us gamble. Yeah? Apply tayo sa loto. It's easy money. Yeah? But you know, in life, we need self-control. Because without self-control, our lust, our desires will control us. Amen? Self-control. Even in the time of the Israelites, they are in a lot of suffering. They can choose a way out, an easy way out. That is to worship other God. They want security. They want easy life. It is easy to turn away from God and worship the emperor Nero and go on with the pagan practices. But the Lord and Peter is saying, you need self-control. It is not doing what the world is doing. Then we need patience. Then we can have patience. If we have self-control, it will bring out patience. Remember, in following God, we really need patience. The warrior bride needs patience to wait. Amen? Even the Israelites on those times, they need patience to wait. Lord, sabi mo, your kingdom is near. We're waiting for the Messiah. We're waiting for your second coming. When is your second coming? It is not easy for men to wait upon God. 
Lord, we've been suffering for a long time. When will you subdue the Roman Empire? When will you win over them? When will you save us? That's why many of them fall away from the faith because they didn't have patience. That's why Peter is saying, have patience. When you begin to have self-control, you can have patience. You can have godliness, putting God in the right place, being man, letting man be man, and God be God. And then there is, when we begin to love God, we can love men. Amen? And there is the filial love. We can love each other, not to fight against each other. Because during those times, many of the disciples turned away from their disciples. Kailan kami mag-aantay? Hanggang kailan? Sabi mo, pinangako mo. Diba? Have you ever been confronted like that by your, you know, siguro mga ading, ma mga disciples nyo? You said ganito. But you know, in, in God's power, if in discipleship, we are willing to submit ourselves in discipleship, we can learn to love each other. And eventually, we can have that agape love. People say only God can have agape love. But you know, God gives us His being. Amen? And so that we can be able to love like God does. What is that love? that is laying down one's life for others. It is sacrificing yourself for the sake of others. And when will you experience that? Not just by coming to church. It is true cell grouping. It is true discipleship. When your disciples will confront you, when your disciples will not honor you, when these people whom you love, they will turn away from you. But will you be able to love them the same? We can. How? We need to be discipled and start a cell group. We need to learn to have a shepherd's heart. And that is how this love and trust can make us fruitful. It's not just, not, it's not just having faith, having God in our lives. But the Christ-likeness, the ability to love, the ability to embrace, to, uh, the ability to walk in the godly ways, to be patient, to have that self-control. Ilan po sa atin dito, we have self-control. Yeah, I don't have self-control towards food. No? No, it's not easy to have self-control. You know, if you're angry, it's not easy to have self-control. But it is possible. Amen? Peter says, it is very possible. But is it easy? No. That's why two times in verse 1 to 11, Peter says, make every effort. Make every effort. We, we don't just ask God, okay, Lord, oh, sige. Do it. No. God also requires and asks us to do something about it. And you know, in every 611, it is not easy. They say it's not easy to be a 611 member. Why? 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. you stay in the church. So we're 611. Secondly, you work in the marketplace. Mondays to Friday. Mondays to Saturday. Mondays to Sunday. But you have to go to church. You have to make time to go to church. And you have to be in a cell group. Not just to be in a cell group, but you have to be a leader. You need to lead a cell group. Imagine that. In the eyes of men, in the mind of the world, it was such a hard, maybe not easy life for each one of us. But no. Because these things that we do today is full of rewards. It is full of glory. So, you come to see that it is possible. Amen? It is possible. That's why I admire everyone who is in a cell group today because they really persist. Even your holidays, you give it to God. Even your time to rest during your cell group, you still come. And this is making every effort. Even in those times, 
people in the time of the Israelites, in the time of the persecution of the church, people are leaving the church, and it's supposed to be. They want to save their lives. People must learn to do something to save their lives. Just like this time ng pandemic, it is not easy. People, it is not easy to come to church. Why? They even want to give, get that time from God to work. Especially in the time of pandemic, there's no security. There's no security of the future. We don't know what's gonna happen. That alam ko mag, may outbreak na naman. We don't know until when we can have our job. We don't know how much we can have. Everything is being inflated today. Ang daming inflation ngayon. So people, how does man respond to it? To it? We work, work, work. Work, work, work. Go over time. We sacrifice what is for God. And we follow money. We follow the world. That's why Peter says, make every effort. Make every effort. God knows what the church is facing. And even in the future, it will be worst. Amen? You're not persecuted enough yet today to the point of you need to give out your life for the sake of your faith. But today, even to the mild difficulties that we are experiencing, we easily break out. We easily fall. Amen? That's why Peter is reminding us we need to make every effort. We need to grow. We need to mature. And this growth and maturity brings fruitfulness in our lives. It's not just like God wants us to suffer. No. But it's actually God is raising us up. God is lifting us up. God is molding us. God is building that courage and faith in your life. If you really want to follow God, be disciple. And we'll see how much do you really want to follow God. You know, lately we had a wonderful experience at the inner room because it, it brings this genuine sharing. And many cell groups today are being stirred up. Many of relationships today are being stirred up. Why? Because this is a test. This is a test of relationship. If we cannot overcome we cannot be victorious in this relationship we have today among us. We can never overcome anything in the world. Amen? And even the willingness to be obedient on what God asks of us, it is, it is not easy. But in discipleship and in shepherding, in pastoring, God is molding us. God is unveiling who we are. We learn to understand what God wants from us. And we learn to understand who we are. And you know, in my life, sa buhay ko din po, it is not easy for me to come to this point of my life. Because being a pastor's kid, it is not my dream to be a pastor. In fact, I hate. I hate to be a pastor. And I never dreamt of it. Or even think of it that I, lo, alam mo yun, yung sabi nila, yung bata ka, pangarap mo. No, I never, even if my dad was a pastor. And to live in a pastor's family, it was a difficult time in our lives. We hated our father. We hated the ministry. We hated God. We have experienced a lot of struggles and hardship because my father, uh, kalakasan po ng pastoring ng father ko, it was a time of revival for the Christian church. They were like the Peter. They were like this early church. They were the first ones who established Christianity here in the Philippines, even dun sa place po namin. So it was a, a difficult time. They have to give and sacrifice their family. They have to sacrifice what they can give to their family and give it to the church. Na experience pa po namin noon, you know, na we have to travel um, Kasi malapit ang Enrile sa amin noon. 
we go through the river. Yung kanta dumaan kami sa, sa ilog, di matatakot, ay ramdam ko yun. You know, we have to go through and, and cross the river and all the speakers, we have it on our head. I was very young that time. I am carried by my father on his shoulder. And this is the kind of difficulty. We have to walk barangay to five barangays to ten barangays. Walk. We have such a difficult life. And it's not easy. I understand what Peter. And my father understood if we don't want to be a pastor. And so that's why during those times, I really rejected the, the, the thought of serving and following the footsteps of my father. But I really thank God because God found me and he knew my heart. And because of discipleship, because of Pastor Danny, when we were youth in the school, in the university, he, he spoke in my life and he healed, he encouraged me, he spoke to me, and everything changed. And how he has passed on the life, the, the heart for the people. And he begins to say, he too can become rich, but he is willing to lay down everything. And, and that time, during that time of discipleship, every day, Every encounter, I begin to crave with that discipleship to the point that I never, I do not go home anymore. And I always receive and desire to receive more. And because of that encounter, today I can be a pastor. And it's continually being tested. I left the full-time ministry and returned. I don't know how many times the Lord will ask me, how do I really love him? But the thing is, God is saying, I am no longer of my past. I'm no longer the old Maricar. I'm no longer the self-righteous, the arrogant, the rebellious. Everything that I had before was gone. And that's what God is saying to me. And so that's why today, I really thank God because of the discipleship. It is through the love and trust in discipleship. You know, whenever we say love and trust, it is equal to discipleship. Yeah? Because you entrust your life to your disciple and you allow them to love you. And it's the same thing. So God is saying to us today, make every effort to walk in the path of growth from faith to that agape love. Let us not be satisfied of having faith and faith alone. Faith without action is death. And where does faith lead us? God gives us faith for nothing. God gives us faith as a stepping stone for us to reach the highest, and that is to be able to love unconditionally. Love beyond man can measure. And so that's why today we continue to disciple we continue to rise up to disciple this generation. Amen. And so today, I really want to encourage you as a pastor of the church. I know you came here in Manila. We have different vision. We have different dreams. Some of you wants to be a full-fledged engineer, an accountant, a teacher. You want to earn money. Very good. You want to support your family. That is great. You want to get rich, that is also great. But more than anything, but above all things, is love. That means we be able to love according to the way God wants us to. And that is discipleship and pastoring. Amen. When we do this, we can grow, not just grow. We can mature, not just mature, but in fruitfulness. That means, nakita po natin yung picture kanina, we can have a lot of fruits. Amen? The fruits, the faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, all these are fruits. And we need this. Amen? We need this in our life today. And so today, as we respond to the word of God, let us ponder and see. Do we have this? 
which stage are we? Which fruit do we have? Or do number one pa lang medyo nag-fail na tayo? Yeah? Sometimes, just on the very basic thing, on faith, we are already lacking and failing. But today, God is saying to us, He gave you the power. He has given you. Sabi po niya dito in verse 3, His divine power has given us everything we need so that today we can rise up. Therefore, verse 10, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why does it say it, you will receive this rich welcome? Because there is glory in discipleship. You will not just be welcome, but you will receive the crown. You will be crowned. You are not just people who receive Jesus, but you are like Jesus. We can embrace, we can love. We can lay down our life for the others. When men today pursue the world, when men today pursue just their own dream, when men today are so focused, on the things of the world, God is saying to us, it is not all about this world. But in the second life after we die, all the things we have, it's all nothing. All the things we acquire, it's all nothing. Even the fame, the glory, your even, your name, it will not be remembered. But why do men work so hard trying to be somebody? Trying to gain so much in the world. There is nothing wrong with it. But the problem that God is saying to us, by following and craving so much of the desires of the world, we have fall from our faith. We have turned away from our faith. We have forgotten there is God. Sabi po nila kanina in the power ministry, men grow weary. Why? Because we are uncertain, unsecure. So we always have fear. But despite knowing we are limited as people, we rely on ourselves. We work so hard on our own abilities. We, we strive for the world. But even this world will fail. But today, as we respond to God, know that through God, we receive that divine power to overcome all things, to allow our faith to grow. You are a tree of life. You are not just an ordinary Christian, but as a Christian that will influence, that can carry others, that can embrace others, that can show the light of God. Amen. Today, as we stand, let us respond to the word. Father, we come before you, and it is you who knows the very deep things of our hearts. We can never hide, we can never cover what is inside our hearts. You know why we are here. You know why we work. You know the very motive of our hearts in doing a lot of things and everything in our life. Lord, we are humans. And just as what Peter says, we are filled with corruption, filled with twisted mindset, filled with too much of the desires in this world. On our own, Lord, we are living and walking in the path of destruction. There's no future for us. But we thank God today in first in Second Peter chapter one, you said there is a way out for us. We have and we have received by faith the divine power that comes from you. And that power transforms us to break free 
and break through from all our human nature that we can put on godliness we can put on the divine nature that comes from you it is the nature that pursues righteousness it is a nature that can grab hold of holiness and be able to walk in the life that is full of hope and we can bring love today i pray lord may your holy spirit come among us and fill us come inside us help us to see ourselves help us lord for sometimes we do not know what we're doing so sometimes we do not know what we want we do not know where we're going but lord today we ask for your light your spirit to come saturate us touch your church your holy spirit touch your church jesus spirit touch your church still the hearts of men to rain fall upon me spirit that church spirit touch your church is still the hearts of men revive us Lord in your passion once again I want to for others like Jesus cares for me let your rain fall upon me spirit touch spirit touch your church is still the hearts of men we once again I want to care for others like Jesus cares for me let your rain fall upon me Father we pray today that your spirit as your spirit fill us oh God may your spirit turn our life around you are your spirit, Lord, transform us eagerly to make an effort to enter into your eternal kingdom by responding in love, by responding in love. Today, God is making this call for us. If we really want to leave the nature of God in our life and experience the life that is fruitful, a life that being transformed, a life that is renewed in God. Today, God says we need to enter, make an every, make every effort, not just by faith. But today, God wants us to enter in the cell group. Now, if you are someone, you don't belong to any cell group yet, and you have that difficulty to give and open your life to others, to open your life in a cell group. Today, I want you to put your hands in your heart and we will pray for you. And today, God is here. God is willing to touch your heart and just, just pray after me. Father, I come before you and you see my life. Lord, I want to know you more. I want to grow in full fruitfulness. Lord, today I give my life and I want to be a disciple. I want to enter, Lord God, in this life being shared with others. For I am not alone. I am not alone in my journey. Lord, today I pray that may you remove 
all that fear remove lord all that doubts even that reservation the lord god today i can open myself with a genuine life and relationship i am not afraid to share my life to share lord the very things that you have given us even my difficulties even my struggles i am not ashamed for i know in truth in love and trust I can grow. I can bear fruit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And also today, if you are in a cell group, that in your cell group, you feel it is not easy for you to still to trust your leaders. It is not easy for you to trust. Or maybe you are a cell, mem cell leader. You find it hard to embrace the weakness of your cell members. You find it hard to follow. You find it hard. And you are almost in the verge of giving up. If you are this person, I want you to touch your heart and to feel the heart of God. To feel the heartbeat of God. The heart of God is always for His sheep. But He cares more for the shepherd. He cares about you. He cares about your difficulties. Today, you can lay down your life. You can lay down and surrender all your hardships. You may be experiencing a lot of struggle, even struggle in your inner self. Maybe physical struggle with your physical bodies. Today, God is giving you the strength and the courage, the boldness. It's not easy for you to confront your cell members because you're afraid. You're afraid how it will turn out. But God is saying to you, fear can never do anything good. God gives you the courage. God gives you the courage today. Just as Jesus confronts Peter, you can do it. You can do it. Through love and trust, we can overcome. Today, lay down all your burdens, all your suffering. Jesus is here. Maybe some of you were hurt in cell grouping. You were being turned down, abandoned, misunderstood and misjudged. The place where you're supposed to receive embrace and acceptance. But it's a place where you receive hurt. But today, God is here. God is here. As you pour out your heart to Jesus, I want you to receive that love and that embrace, the comfort. God cares for you. God loves you. He did not call you to suffer. But in suffering, there is victory. He will enable you to overcome. God is growing you, expanding your capacity. Yes, Jesus, here we are. And we give ourselves to you. We commit ourselves to you. Acknowledging, Father, that we cannot do it on our own. Acknowledging, God, that we ourselves will fall short and we have a lot of weaknesses. But today, God, I want to respond. Because I trust your calling. You didn't call me in a path of destruction but a path of life 
and love. Today, the Spirit of God is filling us. It is the divine power of God that is filling us today. As we are willing to commit ourselves, Lord, we are willing. Lord, we are willing. We surrender our human nature. We surrender our desires, our worldly desires. We surrender all the corruption in our hearts. But God, today I want to follow you. Make this life, Lord, be pleasing before your eyes. Use me. Here I am, oh God. Send me. Send me. Jesus, you are here. Jesus, you are here. Jesus, you are here. Yes, we can ask the Spirit of God to fill us. Yes, Jesus, we need your Spirit. We need your Spirit to transform us. We need your Spirit to overcome all our difficulties. We need your Spirit. Today you can pray for yourself. You know your own struggle. You know your own difficulties. Today, take this time to pray for yourself. What do you want God? accomplish in your life more than faith Lord we want that life that is fruitful a life of abundance in you oh God a life that can grow people that can grow life a life oh God that is being used Lord for your glory a life Lord that will shine your light Jesus help us to break through from all our difficulties Today, brothers and sisters, God says that if we really want to experience this life of maturity and growth and fruitfulness, we need to be disciple and we need to start discipling. Today, let us lift our hands and receive the blessing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I release the love of God to fill you. It is not the love of men, but that agape love. To love yourself, accept ourselves, and be able to love others and accept others. To be able to submit in our authority and be able to lead others. Beginning today, you will no longer live in your own ways, but in the ways of God in the righteous and the holy ways of the Lord, and in His grace and mercy, you will rise up to be the disciples of this generation, to speak out the truth, to bring life, to sprout here in this place. And I release all these fruits to be given and to be received in you. I release the seed to grow in your hearts that you will not just grow as a tree of life, but you will grow as a fruitful tree of life for the generations to come. Father, I thank you and I bless this church. Lord, we commit ourselves unto you to the work, Lord, of discipleship. God, you know the persecutions and struggle of your church today, but God, we stand in our, in our position, for we know that we stand firm, Lord, in your truth and in your mercy. And it is you who is going to accomplish what you have started in us. And so, Lord God, we bless this church, oh God, that through this church, more trees of life will grow. More of you, Father, will be experienced by the people and your glory will be seen in this church. And so, Lord God, I thank you. May each life be a sweet and a pleasing offering unto you. Use us and send us, oh God. Be glorified in our lives so that God, in this time, Lord, your kingdom will be established here and now, here on earth, oh God. Lord, thank you, Jesus. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Sabihin po natin sa katabi natin, ha? Let's start to be in the cell group and let's start this discipleship and cell group. Amen. Let us encourage one another. Hallelujah.